Okay, students, this is lesson 7-4. We're going to learn about similarity in right triangles. Specifically, you will learn how to find and use relationships in similar right triangles. Go ahead and do the review here, and I'll check back with you. All right, we got a big page of theorems and corollaries we're going to use. In general, we, we could call these the right triangle altitude theorems. So uh, the first thing is you should know that when you draw the altitude in a right triangle from the uh, vertex of the two legs, you get three congruent right triangles, and that's the basic theorem, theorem 7-3. And once you have them, um, all those similar right triangles create uh, some properties. And that's what corollary one and corollary two are all about. That uh, corollary one says the length of the altitude of the hypotenuse for a right triangle is the geometric mean of the lengths of the segments of the hypotenuse. The lengths of the segments of the hypotenuse are that one and this one, the blue and the green line. So that, what they're saying is that this altitude right here, CD, is the geometric mean of AD and DB, and that's what you can see here. So those are the means, and those are the extremes, and those are the two parts of the hypotenuse. Okay? And then corollary 2 says the altitude to the hypotenuse of right triangle separates the hypotenuse so that the length of each leg of the triangle is the geometric mean of the length of the hypotenuse and the length of the segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to the leg. So what they're saying here is that this line here, CB, is the geometric mean of the hypotenuse, so this whole line, and this line that's adjacent to that original leg. Likewise, AC, Right here is the geometric mean of the hypotenuse and this little part right there. So that's the idea there. Go ahead and uh, see if you can do 8 and 9 and I'll 8 through 11. I'll check back with you. All right, so the first thing we want to do is to be able to identify the similar triangles. And uh, one way you can do that is just to kind of redraw them and uh, redraw them, maybe relating them in the way they're related. So we have three triangles. We have a big sized, a medium sized, and a small size. And drawing them all the same way kind of helps. So the big one um, is E. A, K. The medium sized one is A, G, K. And the smallest one is E, G, A. So we can write that uh, triangle E, A, K. And now that we have it in the right order, triangle E, A, K is similar to triangle A, G, K. Is similar to triangle DGA. And so those are the similarity statements that you get about the triangles. Go ahead, you try that. From these triangle similarity theorems, right, triangle similarity theorems, we get problems that deal with the geometric mean, so we should just kind of review what that is. Uh, the geometric mean means that um, if you have two numbers A and B, so for any two numbers A and B, the geometric mean is the number that's kind of like in the center of those by multiplication. So proportionally, we can write it like this. A over X is equal to X over B. 
And uh, so we get x squared is equal to a times b. Taking the square root of both sides, we get x equals the square root of a b. So you can find the geometric mean by just taking the square root of the product of the two numbers. So the geometric mean of these two, let's call it x, is equal to the square root of 5 times 12, which is the square root of 60, which simplify equals 2 times the square root of 15. All right, so uh, I'll let you try that. All right, um, we're going to use those corollaries to help us find this. Now remember that um, it was told to us in the corollaries that this line here is the geometric mean of the hypotenuse, so this line, and the leg adjacent to that, which is this line. Uh, proportionally, what that looks like is uh, we can use the numbers. We want to add 12 plus 16 to get the length of the hypotenuse which is 28, and then we want to use this number, 12 and 28. So uh, y, as a proportion, we can say that 12 over y is equal to y over 28. And so y squared is equal to 12 times 28. And if we... Uh, Take the square root of 12 times 28, we get about, so y is equal to the square root of 12 times 28, which is about 18.3 repeating. And then x, we can find the same way. Now remember that x is the geometric mean of the hypotenuse length again, 28, the whole thing, and the leg adjacent, which is that line right there. So we can take 16 over x is equal to x divided by 28. So x squared equals 16 times 28. Take the square root of both sides, and we get uh, 448, which is about take the square root of about 21.2. All right, you try that. All right, let's use these corollaries, these right triangle altitude theorems to help us solve a problem here. Um, what we want to know is the width of the kite, so we want to know this line. Notice we have a big right triangle here, and since it's a kite, this is perpendicular, so we know that this short line right here is the altitude. Let's just call that line right there x. And um, from corollary 1, we know that that x is the geometric mean of the two separate parts of the hypotenuse of that big triangle there. So we can write 11 over x is equal to x over 25. So x squared equals 25 times 11, which is 265. So x is equal to the square root. Oops, I think I did some multiplication wrong there. 25 times 11 is 275, right? Okay. 275. And uh, if we take the square root of 225, if we want it to be exact, we can, we can write it like this and write it in simplest radical form, 5 times the square root of 11. All right, and then we've got to double that because we want the total width, which gives us 10 times the square root of 11. All right, you try that.
All right, that's it for the lesson. Go ahead and do the lesson check, and uh, we'll talk about this next time we meet in class.